are today. We're on a chemical plant. Behind me is the thermal oxidizer unit. It destroys air pollutants from the plant process and then clean air goes up the stack. In this video today, we're going to collect some vibration readings from the combustion fan behind me. It's got a suspected vibration problem. So we're going to analyse it and then come up with some recommendations on what we need to do. Let's go. Right, I've already loaded the vibration route into the analyzer from the software. We're now going to collect the data. It's a fixed speed machine this, it's a two power motor running at 2980 RPM. So I know my speed, I've set it up in the database, I've got a good setup, let's collect the data. I'm going to start at the back end of the motor, it's not the easiest one this. Got good data there, no alarm. I'm going to go to the vertical non-drive end. And now we're going to the uh, motor drive end vertical. Again, good levels. Nothing in this yet. Drive end, that's okay. Horizontal. I'm doing an axial. That's okay. What I will say, on these readings, I'm dual channeling it. So on each bearing, I've got a standard reading and a PQ stroke envelope reading, just looking for bearing and impacting problems. So let's go on the fan now. Right, I've got, I can clearly see here, this is my standard reading. I've obviously got some high alarms here. The overall's not too bad at 3.2, but the waveform P to P and the high frequency, I've got major alarms on there. So we'll have to look at this when we get back. Yeah, and the envelope P view reading, that's showing 50 Gs, which is really high. Let's go the vertical. That's got race levels as well. Not drive end fan bearing. That's got alarm. Again, it's in the high frequency range. And again, just by this data, I can tell the highest readings are on the drive end bearing. But again, we'll analyse it back in the office. And an axial reading. There we go. Right. Let's get back to the office and have a look at this data. Right, we're back in the office now. Uh, we've been out, we've collected the data off that fan. And now I'm going to dump the data from the analyzer into the PC and then we can do some analysis. So let's do that. I'm just going to connect, connector, dump data. There we go. That's in there now. So uh, let's do some analysis and see what's wrong with this fan. Right, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to run an exceptions report on the readings that were taken off this fan and we're just going to see what alarms we're getting and what parameters have gone into alarm. So I'm going to suggest, select the combustion fan. There we go. And this is basically showing all the alarms uh, that were broken. Um, I've got a good setup on this fan. Um, the alarms have been set for it. So any that go over, there's a potential issue there. And what's jumping out at me straight away is all these alarms are coming on the fan 
uh, bearing points, fan drive end, fan non-drive end. And if we look, we haven't got many uh, high velocity readings, the majority um, are high G readings. I mean, we've got one there, 58.99 yeah. uh, waveform peak to peak G. So we've obviously got some impacting problem there. And just by looking at this, I know I've not got, let's say an unbalanced problem. Um, so we're gonna have to do some more analysis. So what we'll do now, we'll come off there and we'll actually go and uh, we'll look at a parameter profile for the fan. And again, this is a great little plot and it basically shows these are the motor points and we can see we've got very, well, we've got no alarms in there. And then we've got the fan, fan drive end, fan non-drive end. And as we look up, we've got different parameters. This is the overall, this is the one times, uh, all the way from peak to peak on the envelope readings. And we can see here we've got 26 to 70 times the RPMs high, we've got alarms there, waveform peak to peak. So we're definitely looking at a high frequency impact and problem here on the fan. So next thing is let's drill down and here we've got the measurement points of the machine. And I'm gonna dive in to the fan drive end. So let's have a look at that. Now the beauty here is uh, I've got trend history here, so I know if this fan's going to have a problem, it's going to really jump out at me. And as we can see, uh, what's interesting, if we look at these two parameters, we've got the overall value and the sub of one times, and they're showing quite low levels. Uh, they're only showing 3.2. Uh, millimeters per second and the trends not really increased but if we look at the high frequency values um, this is the HFD reading uh, that's 7.7 .7. and if we look at the, my favorite parameter the waveform peak to peak we've got we've got a trend increase there quite dramatic um, and it appears it's been going up over the last few visits so this here is uh, telling us we've, we've got a serious uh, problem on this machine. It's gone through the fault level. Um, so what we need to do now is just scan some of the other trends on the other points uh, and then get a feel for exactly where this problem is. It's looking like it's on the uh, fan drive end at the minute. Let's have a look. There's the peak view envelope reading. That's responded as well. We've got a lovely trend from before vertical yeah that's gone up as well and you can also see the 26 to 70 times has gone up uh, I mean if you look at that overall it's hardly budged and this is where systems that just look at the overall value uh, fall down because we've obviously got a serious problem here uh, yet the overall hasn't responded a lot let's go to the non-drive end bearing standard reading hmm now that's not as high there on the um, G levels on the waveform peak to peak, but it is responded. Uh, let's look at the peak view envelope. Yeah, I think now I'm narrowing it down. I think we're definitely looking at we have got an issue on the drive and bearing. So, as trend data is telling us, we've really narrowed it down now. We're on that drive and bearing. So, let's look at as spectrums. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to bring up a history. So I'm going to select quite a few previous readings. Uh, this is going back to 2013. And we can clearly see here, um, this is the one times of the fan. And then the higher frequency range, uh, we're going up to 75 orders here. We've obviously got some activity in these last few readings. Um, if I turn it into acceleration, it becomes even clearer and if I just do a dynamic display control you can see it there so uh, we've obviously got a lot of high frequency activity here um, and it's increasing which is the key so I'm going to jump back now to the spectrum and I'm also going to select the waveform because the waveform has a lot of inf information in there this is quite telling now, we've got a frequency spectrum and we've got a time waveform. Uh, I'm just going to 
double check the speed, it's 2984, I'm going to reset that, so we've definitely got the exact speed now. And if we overlay on the waveform the time it takes for a revolution of the fan, uh, which is obviously it does quite a few revs, it's in not. 0.115 of a second, it's done one, two, three, four, five, about five or six revs. And you can clearly see on the waveform we've got some sharp impacting, and there's quite a big one there. And that's actually taken the peak to peak uh, values, the peak plus and the peak minus, quite high. We've got 33 Gs plus 25 minus, and those added together is what was trended on the peak to peak trend earlier. Uh, let's just look at that um, on its own. So there you can see that is the waveform peak to peak trend, what we've just looked at, and that is obviously increasing. So what is the exact fault on this machine? So now I'm just going to go to my frequency spectrum and I'm going to do some analysis. So. I've got my running speed there, we've got a set of running speed harmonics, uh, all the cursors are showing what's synchronous to the shaft um, and as you can see these first few harmonics are synchronous to 2984 which is one order but I can tell we've got a set of harmonics by the looks of it that are non-synchronous on this machine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to press the X key and uh, see if it can find some harmonic families, there we go, I'm going to mark that, just wait there, mark those cursors, now this primary uh, frequency here, that's these harmonics, is occurring at 6.692 orders, so it's a non-synchronous vibration, so what we're going to do, we're going to I've actually got the bearing numbers on this machine and I can actually overlay them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to overlay them now. So let me go to the correct bearing. So the drive end bearing is an SKF2211E. So I'll just go back. Apologise for the uh, truck behind me. Right, so this is a double road ball bearing uh, self aligner. Now the first set of markers uh, are showing the cage frequency. We've obviously not got a match there, we're trying to match something up with these harmonics. Let's do the ball spin frequency, uh, 2.9, we've not got a match. And now the outer race. Ball pass frequency, outer race, we've got a perfect match with that. So that's saying to me the drive end fan bearing has got quite a severe outer race defect. Let's just look for the inner race frequencies which are a lot higher, 9.3. We've, we've not got a match there. Uh, I've also got the non-drive end bearing in and none of that's matching either. So I can say 100% that the problem is a drive end bearing outer race defect. So what we need to do, looking at the trend, this definitely needs to be planned out at the next shot and the fan repaired because if we leave this, I mean it's already high levels, um, there is a chance it's going to fail and what will probably happen, these levels will probably start to drop just before it fails and the bearing will get hot. Right, there we go, we've been out, we've collected the data, we came back, we dumped the data down, we've done some detailed analysis and it points to a fan drive end bearing defect. The levels are quite severe, we're up to 60 G's on the waveform peak to peak, uh, but I know in I think four weeks they've got a shutdown, so what we're going to do, we're going to keep an eye on this fan, continue to monitor it, um, but I think we should be able to get to the shut, a planned shut and get the bearings changed. Um, we'll get them to change both sets of bearings on the fan even though we know it's just the drive and uh, bearing. It'd be good practice to do that. Um, and that's it really. If I suppose the only thing we've got to watch out for if the data starts to hump up 
and the levels actually start to drop, that's not a good sign and the harmonics start to drop, then I'll start to get worried. But for the minute, I think we're going to make that shut. So uh, let's keep an eye on it and take it from there. Right, it's four weeks later. I've been out back on plant. They've changed the bearing and I've collected some vibration data to see the results. And I've actually got the bearing with me as well, so we'll have a look at that. But what we'll do first, we're gonna have a look at the vibration data and see what happened after this bearing got changed. Right, so, if you remember the point last time that showed it up the best was the fan drive end horizontal. This is where we suspected the defect was. Uh, and as you can see, nothing has much changed on the lower parameters, but certainly on the 26 to 70 times, the high frequency and the waveform peak to peak, we've got a drop on there from, I think it was 30 odd Gs down to 3.2. So that's great. So we can see a significant drop there in levels, which you'd expect because they've changed the bearing. So let's have a look at this bearing. This is the bearing here. And uh, I've, I've split the bearing down so we can see, but this is the outer race. And you can see we've got two raceways here because uh, it's a double balled self aligner. And on the lower loaded zone, we've got significant spall in there. Um, you can see it clearer on the photographs I've taken here. So we can see the damage there. And then with the race removed, we can see there, it's got significant damage there. And I think the root cause of this is overloading of the lock nut and sleeve so basically it's been preloaded but overloaded the bearing which has caused the damage so that's it really uh, the bearings back in service the new one everything's looking fine so we'll continue to monitor that and hopefully it'll be a number of years before we see another defect so thank you